see you made it on time. Y'all see what day it is. Halloween. It's my day. We don't care about Jason. We don't talk about Pennywise. Who cares about somebody that gets you in the suit? That's weak. It's Dick Mike Day. And Dick Mike say, You better stay and enjoy this Halloween special. My boy found a put together. Because if not, <laughs> I could be anywhere. Anytime. Remember that. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Bro, I know. I know that's not the right song, but it's the right song for me for this holiday because it's the most wonderful time of the year for me. You get what I'm saying? Bro, we ain't worried about it. Yo! What's up? Welcome back to the channel, man. And welcome to the Halloween special. I don't have not one, not two, but three of them things lined up for y'all today, man. So go ahead and grab your snacks. Let me grab your popcorn, your candy corn, your, your Snickers, Reese Cups, Laffy Taffy. Uh, do y'all still eat nine laters? I don't even know if they still make nine laters. Man, get your snacks, get you something to drink, lock in with your boy. How we gonna do this thing? I'm gonna come talk to y'all, give you my prediction. We gonna run the fight. I come back at the end and talk, and we're gonna rinse, watch, repeat the rest of the video. And at the end, wrap everything up, man. But as always, if you enjoyed today's video, smash that like button for your boy. Subscribe, turn that bell on so you don't miss anything. The original links will be down below. Now, I ain't gonna say it for all three, so I'm gonna just say it this one time, but we're gonna give it some extra energy. You feel me? Help me out here. Let's get it! Let's go! First up, we have Saber Wolf versus John Talbain. I think this fight is about to be S tier. I'm expecting these two to get very active. Speed is about the same. They both can power up, but y'all, I gotta go with John. John has a flaming dragon. Saber Wolf has a flaming bat. Now, I don't know if their battle is gonna make it be like a swarm of flaming bats and it's effective, but one flaming bat is not hurting John, bro, but that flaming dragon might get Saber Wolf out of here. Team John. But let's get right into the fight. Mm. I have no forgiveness left, monster. I knew it. Gosh, bro, they gotta get at them. It's two werewolves, bro. Ooh. Oh my gosh. There we go. Bro, Sable got that dog in it. Taste enticing. What I told y'all about the flaming back. What up? Face the fury of the beast! That hurt though! That hurt him, bro! Okay, hit it with the shoulder charge. Oh, it's GG! It's GG! Wait, but now that he's not thinking, are they on the same level? Oh, never mind, never mind. Oh, he turned up. Combo! Not like him. 
No! Not like this! I'm no monster, but tonight I'll make an exception. I think I need to see a therapist. Bro, that was Good a crazy how fight. Awesome that was. Yes! Saberwolf was a ferocious foe, but John had a lot going for him in most regards. For instance, Bro, John was trained I in all yeah, I was nervous. And I was nervous decades, at the end. While Saberwolf relied entirely on instinct. You mean killer instinct, eh? You're no fun. But hey, remember how Sabi defeated Glacius, who attacked Arya in less than a nanosecond? Technically, that put Saberwolf's reaction capability well within light speed, which John claimed he could match. But that was just bragging, right? Hardly. Those Sweetzel units John fought were capable of flying across the galaxy, hundreds of millions of light years in only a short time. This is important because fellow Darkstalkers Morgan and Dimitri have intercepted Huitzels in mid-flight combat. Yeah, those two are A-classers, but B-plus Darkstalkers like John have kept up with the higher classes in speed plenty of times. Hell, BB Hood can and she's a C-class. When it comes to the Darkstalker class system, speed is much less a factor than power and energy levels. To be frank, even if John was half Morgan's speed, he'd still be faster than Saberwolf. So, if anything, he wasn't bragging enough. He was Dang. way stronger, too. QB's also a B-plus Darkstalker, and she lifted that 30 million ton beehive. That was crazy, Way more bro. than anything Saberwolf can pull off. And when it came to ranged options, I think a flaming Inferno Key Dragon beats I out a lone discount fire bat any day. While his application is different, we can gauge the level of key John has at his disposal by factoring Anakaris sinking all of Egypt. So the only logical thing to do was measure the total weight of ancient Egypt. No, really. We did that. Most buildings in the period were made of How, high bricks bro? and about 4.3 meters tall. Adding the known volume of the pyramids and considering additional land, we determined Anacarsis' key had to be strong enough to move a civilization weighing over 1.2 trillion tons. And that's not even counting all the people. Or cats. They had a shitload of cats. Now that sounds crazy for an old school horror monster like a mummy or a werewolf, but Darkstalkers aren't quite like the classics. At this fight's core though, John won because of the kind of werewolf he was. Through years of struggle, Saberwolf never found any means to tame his savagery, while John had successfully managed to regulate his wild side, giving a level of precision, skill, and control the poor Baron couldn't even begin to understand. Saberwolf was vicious and unrelenting, but Saber John had the, training, had the dog power in. and Yes, the flaming Inferno Dragons to score a brutal victory. Brutal doesn't even cut it. I mean, how much blood was that? You know, it had to be at least a gallon. The winner is John Talbane. I drop it from an S to an A tier fight. I love how these two got active from the very beginning. They threw down, bro, for real. And the ending was amazing. I really thought John folded. I thought Saber came back, man. But hey, I don't want to be too cocky or whatever but i did say that flaming dragon was gonna be used to get rid of him i did not watch this i haven't seen any footage anything like that it was just bro come on it's a dragon and it's a bat anybody could have guessed that you feel me and since we talking about the flaming dragon and bat you know that was a fire battle we starting the halloween special off with some heat On to the next fight. The next fight we have is Carnage versus Lucy. Never heard of her show. She is amazing. I promise y'all, I will watch her show. That being said, I'm still going with Carnage. I don't think that she has enough power to completely get rid of him and destroy him so he can't regenerate. I know they said at max vibration, her arms become visible and she makes explosions, but I don't think that that's strong enough to get rid of Carnage, bro. But I may be wrong. I may be wrong. Let's get right into the fight. I love this animation already, bro.
จายThat opposite of what I said happened. That is insane, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, shout out to Lucy. And then Cletus. Lucy really hates dog killers. And for good reason. Carnage was a challenging opponent. It was incredibly difficult for Lucy to deal any lasting damage against him. He had the durability advantage in the bag, though Lucy fighting as a puddle proved she could take a lot of pain and keep on fighting. Sadly, Carnage came up short in pretty much everything else. Right, Carnage was tough, but Bruh, not defense. Even his surviving that gene bomb isn't quite as impressive as it sounds. Since he had no other feats to even remotely back up planetary level durability, and the bomb was more akin to a biological weapon anyway. While Carnage's tendrils could pass speeds of Mach 2, Lucy's vectors once reached into outer space. By timing her accompanying monologue and comparing the longest vector's length to the curvature of the Earth, it's clear she reached over 2,400 miles in 20 seconds max. Way longer than Carnage's two mile feet. All this means her vectors were moving at least 440,000 miles per hour. More than 500 times the speed of sound and 250 times faster than Carnage. Good luck getting past that. And this was well, really was the biggest hurdle. Wrong. With Lucy's redonkulous speed and Carnage's healing powers, it all boiled down to one thing. Who could hit the killing blow first? I mean, Carnage could respawn from scraps, so the only way to beat him for good was to totally vaporize him. And Lucy had the perfect answer to that. Remember that time she hit an island so hard she caused a 9.2 magnitude earthquake and a 100 foot tall tidal wave? Such no. a feat would require no, an I enormous amount that. of explosive energy approximately 31,000 tons of TNT, similar to the bomb that hit Hiroshima. It's literally compared to nuclear fusion in the Elfenlied manga. Elfenlied, it's German. The point is, in order to beat Carnage for good, Lucy needed to totally obliterate him, and she could and do that. that. She did. The heat produced within the initial impact of a nuclear explosion can reach temperatures up to 180,000 degrees Fahrenheit more than 18 times hotter than the surface of the sun. And to top it off, heat was Carnage's biggest weakness. Even Ooh, if Lucy's explosive force was just a fraction that. of this, it would still have been far too much for him. She just needed to smack him before he could power through her vectors, which chances were pretty slim for that happening anyway, because 
There's a bunch of them, and they're so damn fast. Hitting Carnage with a big explosion punch was way easier. Cletus and his symbiote may have had the endurance, but Lucy's space-worthy speed, overwhelming presence, and nuclear strength won the day. She dealt the Carnage needed for a total victory and took the lead. There, I said it right, Wiz. Happy? The winner is Lucy. Bro, I never heard of her show. I never heard of her. She is cold. I really like Lucy, bro. Where do I put this fight? Probably A tier in front of Saberwolf versus John. Bro, Carnage put two little scratches on her thigh. That is insane. Her defense? Her deep, bro. They say defense is the best offense. Right? I, I did. I ain't say that backwards. I, that is right. Y'all making me think I'm wrong. On to the next fight. For the last fight, I'm pretty sure you guys know what it is. Y'all voted for it. Ganondorf versus Dracula. Let's think about this right quick. The first fight, I was completely right. The second fight, I was completely wrong. Now, I'm completely unsure. I don't know who to pick. I guess because they pointed out that Dracula is arrogant, that could be his downfall, so I guess I'm gonna go with Ganondorf. To me, neither of them had something that just stood out to make me be like, oh yeah, yeah, this one, or oh yeah, man, Dracula, he got, bro, no. And if Ganondorf loses, it is what it is, bro. I was gonna say, man, we about to just sit back and watch this one. No prediction, but I'm choosing Ganondorf. Let's get this last fight started. I never been a fan of vampires anyway. I should have went with him anyway, bro. Your castle is lost, vampire. No man can challenge. Oh, we say the best for last, bro. <laughs> you see how clean is it? A miserable pile of secrets. I'm no mere man. Slap him. <laughs> Bro, this fight is clean. Your tricks mean nothing. That boy Dracula cold. Nope, not gonna work. <laughs> you gotta transform, bro. Stop playing with him. Transform! Yes! Bad at a beast! Oh no. Oh no. I am no 
Get in the door. to drink beers as violently as Dracula drinks people. There was a lot going on here. Both Ganondorf and I Dracula see why show similar wanted this reaction fight, speeds, bro. with only a small percent difference when compared to the speed of light. They were both brilliant schemers who have perfectly manipulated many intelligent foes, and their standard magical arsenals seem pretty comparable overall. But Dracula did have a leg up with a few extra magic powers that Ganondorf just didn't have. Like how he could rip out his soul in a bunch of different ways. That's something Ganondorf never really had to guard against before. Also, remember how Ganondorf survived an explosion worth about two kilotons of TNT? An admirable feat to be sure, but let's look at that meteor strike Dracula survived. Based on its size, composition, and speed of ablation, it must have struck with an energy equivalent to two megatons of TNT, 1,000 times greater than Ganondorf's proven durability. But hey, I know what you're thinking. What about that sage sword Ganondorf had? Shouldn't he have had an easy time killing Drac since it's a holy weapon? In some circumstances, sure. Running this fight over and over a hundred times, Ganondorf would certainly score a few victories. But when considering Dracula's absurd regenerative abilities, it would take more than just a few hits from a holy weapon to finish him off. Not to mention, Dracula also wielded a holy weapon that took advantage of Ganondorf's weakness in the form of Demonic Megiddo. Yeah, I know it's called Demonic, so it seems weird, but it is explicitly described to be holy magic. And dropping a holy nuke on Ganondorf was a way that. more powerful victory move than trying to hit Dracula with a sword. And that's really what this came down to, power. Despite literally wielding the Triforce of Power, Ganondorf's potential paled in comparison to the energy Dracula drew from Chaos. Let's put this in perspective. The Triforce of Power comes from the goddess Din, who made the Earth. While we don't know the exact amount of power Din put in this piece, let's just highball it and directly compare it to her. So the energy attributed to the Triforce of Power could be compared to the size and energy of a planet. However, the Chaotic Realm is an entire universe, completely upheld by the power of the Chaos Makes Entity. Sense to me. That is leagues greater than the power Ganondorf possessed. So it definitely had a lot more juice to give. Try thinking of the Chaotic Realm and the Triforce of Power as batteries, which fuel Dracula and Ganon's abilities. Compared to each other, Dracula would be drawing energy from something like a car battery, while Ganondorf's would be more akin wow. to a small double A. Wiz, I'll give you five bucks if you lick that battery. Ganondorf certainly held his own, but Dracula's more varied magic, greater regeneration, and enormous reserves of power sealed this desert warlock's fate. Of all the ways to go, that must have sucked. The big pig's chances were slim to gain none. The winner is Dracula. Sheesh! Bro, that boy Dracula. And he was by it. He was by it, man. This fight, S tier. This is S tier rank. I see why y'all voted for it. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't even close. I think this one had what, 63%? Y'all really wanted to see this? And I see why. So in the end, I went one and two. For those that may think I cheat or I fall apart when I'm wrong. Nah, man, it's GG's, good fights. I enjoyed these three. The animations were cool, music was fire. I'm very interested in Lucy. I'm telling y'all, I will be checking out that show. I gotta see what she got going on, bro. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for your support, bro. I really hope you guys enjoyed the Halloween special. Smash that like button, subscribe, turn that bell on so you don't miss anything, bro. But I'm about to go ahead and wrap this thing what the world? What's going on with my...
So you made it to the end of the video. Did you do what Phantom said? Did you hit that like button, subscribe, turn that bell on? You know your boy didn't much don't do that much talking. I got people to go stop. Maybe even you. Help the Halloween.